Hey everyone, Rick here, and folks, today we are going to be unboxing the Fire Uni deck for the new Neopets Battledome trading card game. I know this seems out of the realm, potentially, of things that I typically unbox, but we have a lot of this new Neopets CCG stuff, folks, because back in the day, like, I'm sure I'm not alone, right, that... A lot of us used to play Neopets on the website. So when I was a kid in the early 2000s, this was a fun way to interact with friends online. And um, I'm already slaughtering this poor box and I'm trying to get it open. And uh, my sister was the one who actually introduced it to me. So when I saw that they were coming out with this new CCG, I was like, okay, I want to... First, I d wasn't, you know, I'm not a big CCG player, but I was like, well, you know, um, I took a peek at it on the, uh, like, some YouTube videos that were uh, showing off how to plays and also some playthroughs. And first of all, folks, any get CCG, that starter deck that comes with glorious dice look at these dice and actually due to the fact i mean look at the the gold in there and then the they're six-sided but um the six is the neopet star you get 10 of those dice and go check out my prior video on the starry akara starter deck where we looked at these dice the blue dice those are gorgeous as well i lost my train of thought but anyways so it was through the gameplay where the combat was rolled to resolve with some modifiers based on your Neopet stats and equipment, fairies, legends, potions, food, all these other different card types that you use to modify uh, those kind of results. Here is, let me see if we can back this up a bit, the playmat. I'll try to be a little quicker in this one. The last one, obviously, I really poured over everything. but And I won't go into a whole lot of backstory here other than to say that, yeah, this um, playmat I do wish was like single-sided with a separate rules because the rules are on the back. But thankfully, you can go online and get the rules. And if you want to either scroll through them on your phone or print them out so that you have those as you're playing the game on the playmat itself. And then we have the deck of cards here. And I'm anxious to see if this differs much from the Staria Kara deck that we just took a look at. So if you've seen that video, you'll probably be able to follow along with me here to see if there's any major differences other than the Neopets, of course. So here is Fire uni here is fire shoru shoru here is base uni but still a foil uni here is a fire paintbrush so we like we saw the starry paintbrush to level up not level up because leveling up is actually a thing um transforming uni into the fire uni but there uh or uh we had the starry paintbrush in the other deck to transform regular Akara into Starry Akara. Now we have the fire paintbrush. So I wonder, is there also like a fire Akara too? Um, because it seems like these paintbrushes, you can have those in your deck and be able to transform your base Neopet into one of apparently multiple different transformed versions. Here is a hollow soup fairy which is a different fairy, so that is a different fairy. And then here's our other Neopets. So those are all different. Now we do have another Corbat. Lightning Lenny, I'm pretty sure, is new. I think we had a bank manager last time. Some of these legends. Money Tree, Pant Devil, Poison Tip Dagger again. Some of these do look the same. A lot of these do look the same. We're going through the equipments here. But I love the, like, the the cartoony. It just, it's like a co. I feel like it's a cozy game. And I almost hate to say that because it's, I'm sure people are going to take this super seriously and competitively in organized play and whatnot. But 
it also just feels like home, kind of. It's kind of hard to describe. And then here's the food with the hot dogs. I think a lot of these potions as well are the same that we've seen. Now see here is a different code stone we did not see. So these code stones, the gameplay, and I talked about this in the other video, but I want to talk about it here as well. When you are engaging in combat, you're going to be rolling a number of dice equal to the attack attribute. So in this case, it's four. Base Lupe is four. Successes are determined in this game on a four up. So you have a 50-50 shot of, you know, defeating your opponent. The starry the star on the six is a critical success, and I won't get into all the rules, but critical successes can't be blocked. Even when the defender rolling that number of defense dice rolls those critical defenses, there's no such thing as critical defenses. That would just be a six, or it would just be a success. Um, so the attacker does have the advantage there. But what's cool are these code stones that you can attach to them to level them up. Right now, Lupe is a level nothing. Now Lupe is a level one with three agility. You compare agilities, and whoever has the higher agility gets to reroll that number of dice as the difference in agility. Um, and, there, and when you're playing these cards, you can only play them if your Neopit is at that level. So a level one Lupe with this code stone applied would be able to use this Corbat Defender Legend card. I haven't read through all the rules too terribly much, but at least I've caught on to some of those basics. And then here's, a, I think, a third different type of attack code stone, and I mentioned this in the other video as well. I'm curious as to why, if there's any gameplay effect, that this code stone, the only purpose of it is to increase your attack by one. And you got four copies of it here. But in the other deck, there were two other types of code stones that also did just that. And they were not lose, they were something else. So, and like, here's a Mao. So a Mao was the other one that we saw. But now we've seen, and see, they do the exact same thing. I don't know if there's any other gameplay difference there. Orn we've seen, um, that increases defense. And Vo also increases defense. See, two different ones. They apparently do the same thing, so I'm curious to know if there is a gameplay effect there, difference. All right, um, that is the unboxing of this deck. I went way faster this time, mostly because I tried to keep my rambling to a minimum. Uh, to, suffice to say that that is what got me into this game, was seeing the uh, actual mechanics in play. Because I'm not much of a CCG'er. I um, am not much of a like a Neopets fan anymore, really. I haven't been on the website in probably 20 years, which is crazy to say. Um, but yeah, this is ab absolutely, the way this game works is so cool. So if Lupe uh, was a level one like this, he'd be rolling four dice in attack, going up against uh, Shoiru, with defense two. So let's just kind of mock battle that out here. So Lupe would be rolling four dice with one success, and it was a critical success. I don't even think then that Shoiru would even need to roll unless they had some kind of card that would help them out. In this case, in defense, they rolled two successes, but that critical um, hit on attack wouldn't mean a uh, anything for these defense. So Shoiru would get a hit taken off of their HP, and Shoiru has 10 HP, as you can see there. And it's best two out of three. So both Neopets battle it out, and whoever loses, they lose, and then you put your victory, start a victory pile, and then you each choose two new Neopets out of the Neopets that you've brought. And play continues like that. However, you discard all the other cards that you've played. So you're always starting fresh, essentially, with just the cards in your hand, I believe. So, you know, you kind of have a blank slate again to see who can battle up. And if you don't win that second battle in a row, it does go down to a third battle to decide who ends up being victorious. So yeah, super exciting. We have a lot of booster packs to open as well, which I'd like to do maybe even on some lives. But otherwise, folks, thank you all so much for watching. I do truly appreciate it. And until next time.